Hey, welcome back to the seventh episode of Bag Surgery, starring the all cornhole game changer steady by McDougal. Uh, well, if you know me and you know anybody that's ever played cornhole, uh, most of us are not big fans of them and that. But you know what? I don't want to make a, a boring video, so. Let's just get into the bags here. Off the bat, I mean, these guys are known for their bigger template. And these are slightly broken in. They're ever so slightly played with. These are, of course, sent to me used. Uh, I would never, ever, ever buy anything from these folks. And let's see what we got here. We got two sides of Turbo from Regal Fabrics. I ain't talking. Submated, they use, they use the cloud. Submated blue, black, and that's, that's all the colors you're getting. But, you know, that goes to what I say about being able to tell your bag apart from others and being able to see it from far away, having it stand out, is it doesn't need to be crazy. It doesn't need to be crazy. I am not crazy about how this whole logo lines up because of the uh, shift. It puts the ACL off center. Like the whole thing centered, but they centered. You know, this could be centered here, and this could be centered here. This is surely centered, mostly. Speaking of centered, tell me what you think here. Is that patch centered? Is that patch centered? I think that one's the most centered. Is that patch centered? And is this patch centered? Answer, probably a majority of no. That's okay. Uh, this fill with this fabric, actually not too bad. I, the all slides doesn't work for me. And of course these aren't really all the way broken in, but it's not bad. It's a lot of fill. They weigh, I think a pound. We'll weigh them later. Uh, jamming my finger, I can, oh, I am barely touching the table, just hovering above the table. So that's pretty full stuff. Maybe you got that grab. Uh, pretty sure it's a round fill. Definitely a mixture, but I'm sure it's mostly round. I can feel it. Closing stitch. Automated machine. These are a little shorter than what they're doing now. I think the ones I see posted are like from about here to here. <laughs> pretty huge. Uh, they use an automated machine. They didn't bother to trim the tails. That's just laziness. A lot of uh, lines you can see here. I think they did a black line on this sublimation to show where to line up the patch. And on the patch itself, there's some lines. So they might be cutting it by hand. Might be. Maybe the laser's doing it. Pretty sure they have a laser. Sublimation on this, uh, that's gonna be two thumbs down. Ghosting, it's shifted, it's off. When you use sublimate suede, you gotta use tacky paper. You can't use regular paper. And suede is, suede takes like the best detail uh, of any fabric. Like, check this out. Super duper detail. But where's that detail here? So it's either the paper or they're printing at a lower resolution just so the printer goes faster, which is most likely the case, probably both. The patch is not glued down, it's only sewn on. There's no glue holding it to the fabric. I can, I've already got it pulled separate from each other, that's why you see little threads here coming out. But suede is notorious for doing that, so expect to see little uh, threads coming out. Got the zigzag stitch. Start, stop, a little back tack. Pretty sure this is all done on an automated machine. I, I don't think they're doing it by hand. Slap it in there. Just the same way it does the template. Um, let's get a little closer look. Of course, before I forget, I want to thank Larry Phillips out in South Haven, Minnesota for shipping these out to me. Very kind. 
he wanted to take them apart himself, but he said, oh, I just don't want to mess it up. I was like, well, send them on over here, buddy. Okay, we got stuff coming out of the middle. Can you see that? Got bread tails on the side. Bread tails coming out of the friggin' middle. Come on, guys. You gotta do better than this. Not centered. Looking at this, uh, Change your game. Well, let's get a quick measurement on this scene before we take it apart. Focus. We got two and a half inches, and I bet this one's two and a half inches all on the automated machine. Yeah, two and a half inches. It's gonna be the same. Even if I counted every stitch, they'd all be the same stitch. take apart. So let's get that fast motion going. All right, there we go. Let's take a quick peek inside here. It is indeed a mix fill full of LDPE and heavy pellets. Huh. Okay. One last, one more thing you're gonna notice: those thread tails are coming out of the main seam. All right, there it is. What in the goddamn hell going on here? It's like glued on we're gonna take that apart I think that's just to prevent the zigzags from coming out because like when you do a back tack on zigzag if it's not in the same perfect spot it will come undone this is a pretty thin thread too uh, yeah this is getting patches sewn on obviously separately then the two sides are sewn together so but they use the same fabric like, this is the same fabric that's on the faster game changers on their all slides, the fast side. It's on 90% of the bags in the freaking cornhole room. So, like, this is stuck on, but the patch itself, there's no glue or backing. So what, what's going on here? Anyway. Well, here's the fill it's mostly LDPE pellets, those little translucent guys, and they're probably 30% of it is these heavy pellets they weigh more than your average pellet so that's how they uh, are able to keep the bag from being too full is using these heavies guys if you use just these the bag will be way too full way too squishy and not fun to play with like not good but you know what let's get close up right right now let's do it right now yeah we're in here we go. Now you can tell these have been used a little bit because these are kind of like getting shiny. The uh, white ones. Make sure you double check this focus. Got a little bit of pellet dust. And your basic low density. Mix with a high density. Thicker cut. Thicker than my pellets. I'm sure they're probably from the same source, just different cut. I don't know. They, like, if you go to Victory Pellets, they have pellets just like this called heavy, heavy pellets. They cost a lot. Because it's from them. I bet these old cornhole folks are getting a super wholesale rate, probably buying 50,000 pounds at a time, 100,000 pounds at a time, or more. And either mixing them in a Filling machine. I think they still fill them with a funnel and stuff for whatever reason. So they're probably portioning it out by hand, like one bucket here, two buckets there. While we're all up in this close up mode, let's get in stitching. Like most machines, 
from the start to the top right. This is one automated machine doing all the stitching. Uh, the opening looks to be about inch and three quarter, and it is not bad. <laughs> it is two and a half inches. Oh yeah, this closing is three inches. So, so they got good overlap going, even though this missed, like this is right there. I almost got a little gap forming. Although the chances of any of those pellets coming out slim to me. But uh, like I was saying, this closing stitch is off center. You can definitely see it here on the back side and the inside. Um try and get focus. Okay, we got one, two, three, four. Three or four on the back tack. Down, back, out. Single stitch, and even though, you know, I know these guys have a big hand in the rules for the ACL bags, and I think at one point it said it has to be double stitch. Well, these are single stitch. And the tension, not perfect. This th fabric is thicker than most. So they got a lot of opportunity to get a better stitch going there. Uh, but they can't get away with like just doing the single stitch and having longer longevity because if you recognize this from the BG video, laser cut. We got laser cut fabric. So cool. Uh, this is probably sublimated and, and roll by roll, roll to roll. And then laser cut. You hear the cats in the background? I am going to kick them across the room. No, I'm not. I'm going to pet them. Round and round we go. Let's get a uh, stitch length measurement going here. I'm going to do it on the big notches. Of course, I'm looking at the monitor. I'm only doing it. Can we count that? Where are we? One, 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Coming around to the end here. The machine automatically cuts the thread. Let's take a look at the back side. We get a real good look at the underside. What I assume is the underside. No, this this is the top side. My bad. This side here that we just looked at, that's on the bottom when the machine is doing the sewing. And where did all this dirt, brown dirt come from? Huh, weird. I say that the other side was the bottom because you'd want to know where your square is. Here it is, zigzag stitch. They probably tried to file a patent for that too, but get out of here. It's not very tight. Like that's a little too easy to pull up. This is what's cool. In a way, I, I do want to See how well st how stuck down this is. What's on there pretty good. Ooh, come on now. Is it glued? There we go. Yeah, you can see all the tails. Yeah, this this is probably done by hand because uh, an automated machine wouldn't leave four long tails like that. One top, one bottom, and then starting that. So there's your four tails. Starting here, back tack, around we go. Of course, there's someone from the top side. Uh, I'm gonna need to glue that back up for my buddy. <laughs> so that his bags don't fall apart, because they will. I got some super glue. Let's get these measurements. So if you wanted to build your own at home, you could make it the same size. The width is gonna be right there, six and seven sixteenths. Six and seven sixteenths on your template width. It's always a little shorter this way. What is the deal, Pickle? That's six and seven sixteenths. The corner roundness. I'm gonna just compare it off my tag. 
template, wherever it may be. I just had this with this template. Uh, 1.5 inch round over. If you're doing it in your program, have the corners round over at 1.5 inch. The patch, we're gonna measure from here. Yeah, patch looks like I know the right part is. Patch is three and a half by three and a half. Yes, sir, ma'am. Three and a half. The zigzags. Five millimeter stitch length. And the width. Also, five millimeter. So your zigzag is going to be five by five millimeter. Around the edge you go. The gap between the white and the edge is probably going to be more than five millimeters. It's going to be six millimeter. And the uh, color part, if you're making it exactly like this, is three inches. And again, the whole square was three and a half. There's your measurements. Oh, the opening. The opening is, didn't we say? I already, yeah, I already measured that. Two and a half. With a two and a half inch opening, they're pretty easy to flip. Let's take a look right here. It's sublimated with a rounded edge corner, and it's cut after it's sublimated with that laser. You can see the black, which is probably where the laser eye is able to track or at least find where it's supposed to go. White thread throughout. Let's give it a flip. It's a big bag, it's a bigger, I mean, standard size. Most people make it a little less than six. I think that just has to do with the fill. Because this, you know, is a blended fill, like we said. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there, I couldn't find my super glue, so we're just going to put that back inside. So if that ever falls apart, well, send it back to all corner. Well, we got that one all closed up. Pretty easy. Um, I trimmed my thread tails. I think mine looks better. Totally. Okay, let's weigh it up here. 15.9. One pound. 15.9. And I've already weighed them. I'm pretty sure this one's one pound. Oh. Yeah, one pound. Two of them were one pound. And two of them were 15.9. Let's see what all four weigh. It's four pounds on the dot. Then something good. It's not. Three pounds, 15.9 ounces. A uh, neat thing about Phil, from a player's perspective, I think, is that, well, let's talk about the sublimation while we're here. The sublimation looks fine on the turbo. Uh, plenty of heat, plenty of pressure. There's no white spots in the valleys. That's good. The white is white. The blue is blue. They match. There's no hot or cold spots. The only problem is the suede. They need to do a little work on that. Change the paper to some tacky so it didn't slide around and make ghosting. Eh, where was I? The fill. So most of it was that LDPE semi-translucent fill. The rest was to give a little more weight to, so it wouldn't be too full. Um, from the bag maker's perspective, that LDPE is a nightmare. Any amount of static gets into that, oh boy, watch out, it's going everywhere. They'll go anywhere except where you want them to go. That's how it was filling this back up. Even with the pellets in a glass bowl, they were clinging and flying and doing all sorts of things. Is that an advantage when you're playing? Possibly. Are the pellets repelling from each other? Yes, are they probably doing that when they're trying to get in the hole? Yeah, maybe. They might be shifting around, getting a little help from gravity. Might be, maybe. Tiniest advantage, maybe. I don't think it'd make a big difference on this particular set of bags, the steadies, because this is a six speed. This turns into like a four with the patch on there. Um, so yeah, it would, it, I think on the faster bags, yeah, you might notice a difference. Like the all slides, I see those things just drip, even though they're a little too big. I think they're too big for me. 
Yeah. I'm not a fan of the game changer in general. It's a neat concept, neat idea. They really put the time in to make the blah blah blah. And then right. sue people that didn't deserve it. Um, like, when I play leagues and there's blind draws, and my partner that I drew is like a die hard game changer or die hard all slides, it's like. <sighs> Do we have to? God, throw your stupid bag. Like, getting the game changer in a blind draw is like getting homework on a Friday night in grade school. You have the whole weekend, and then you're looking forward to it. And the teacher says, oh, I need a book report. That same feeling you got when you got assigned that homework is the same feeling you get when your blind draw partner says, I love game changers. Final thoughts, will I ever buy them? No. Will I still throw them if my partner asks? Yes. Uh, it does take me like a game to get used to them and that game is the game we lose because I'm not used to them and I'm not trying to get used to these. I like throwing them in other bags. Uh, they're good beginner bags. If you're a beginner and you want to try something new and you got money to burn, just burn a hole in your pocket. Yeah, get, get yourself some game shooter steadies. Or just buy this fabric from Hobby Lobby, make your own bags. They sell the LDP pellets too. And you can get the other pellets online, victory pellets. Make your own, I mean, I, I just gave you the dimensions. Okay, well, I'm not gonna give it thumbs down. They're, they're still pretty well made. The laser cutting is a big thing that takes, that's an industrial scale manufacturing that they're doing. So you gotta give them props on that. Way to go, they only have like three fabrics in her whole arsenal. This one, this one, and the fast side of all slide. Uh, that's about it. I think they're late to the game on one bag. I haven't even bothered to look because I don't care what they put out. Uh, I think they did add one more fabric. For a total of four. Okay, allcornhole.com. Two thumbs in this direction.